أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم والصلاة والسلام على أشف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله In the name of Allah the gracious the merciful all praise is due to Allah the Lord of the universe the master of the day of judgment I bear witness and testimony to the oneness of Allah to his magnificence his omnipotence his might his glory to his being the creator and sustainer of all things the giver of life the guider of hearts the master of the day of judgment and I bear witness to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and final messenger may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon all those who choose to tread in his path until the last day in Surah Al-Buruj Allah Zawjal takes oath by many things but within those oaths that he takes he takes two in relation to the day that we are upon right now this day of Juma, and a day that is forthcoming within those blessed 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that we discussed last week the day of Arafah that he says wa shahidin wa mashhud that he takes oath by the witness and that which is witnessed. The shahid, the mufassirin in large part say, is this day of Jummah. That in and of itself it is a witness. It is something that will testify whether we attended to it in the way that it was intended to be attended or not. And that which is witnessed, the day of Arafah, is a day that is arguably, definitively, the most auspicious day in our Islamic calendar. May Allah make us from amongst those who reach it and benefit from it. And last week we discussed the 10 days of the Hijjah. After the Jummah was complete, literally, until just the last hours of even this morning, more so than at any other time did I have people reach out saying that we didn't know that the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah were this important. We don't know about these fasts that you're talking about. We didn't know that the Udhiyah was so important to perform. We didn't know that the day of Arafah had such significance. When we were growing up, we were told that this Eid is an Eid that's in comparison to the other Eid after Ramadan. And we consider this to be the smaller Eid. There's not a mechanism of comparison in that way. These are all Mubarak days. And the idea is to not think about them from the standpoint just of observation from those that surround you, but individually, what is it that you want to take from it? That when Allah takes oath by anything, when He is elevating something in His creation by making it an object of an oath, it's telling you that these are important things, you want to reflect upon them, take insight from them. And just like this day of Jummah, that all of you have left behind everything that you left behind to come, whether you are conscious of it or not, it is a witness. May Allah make it a witness for us and not against us. The day of Arafah is going to be something that its importance is given to us in the Qur'an and in the Hadith definitively. The ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. And if you're going to take anything from the days of Dhul Hijjah that are upon you, and why we talked about it a week ago and throughout the course of the week in various halaqat and durus, and are going to continue to talk about it, is because you don't want to get caught off guard. That in the midst of something is when you start to think about it. Or only when others are doing something around you. You are wondering, why am I not doing that thing too? 
But you still have time between now and the coming days. We're on the 18th of this month. We'll know in that evening when the month of Dhul Hijjah starts, when the day of Eid al Adha is, when the day of Arafah is, when the most blessed 10 days in the calendar year are, where the most blessed day in the year in its entirety, the day of Arafah is, where our holiday, a holy day, the day of Eid al Adha is. You're going to know it days from now. So you can anticipate strategizing how it is that you will utilize those things. Whether or not we have consciousness of it, Allah is telling you what these things are. وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ The day of Juma is a witness, and the day of Arafah is what is witnessed. You just have to decide if you are going to take it in the way that it's intended to be taken. We have everyone move up. You just come in close. For the brothers to, uh, don't want anybody to have to stand up again, but just if we can move towards the windows, because people are going to clutter towards the door here if they see everyone seated here. So if anyone's open to just moving this way where there's a lot more room, we'd appreciate it, inshallah. And of the questions that came up are, what are the things we have to do? Versus what are the things that are recommendations? You got to be able to distinguish at this juncture in your spiritual journey in this world that the idea of obligations are not meant to be burdensome. And the way that we juxtapose obligations and recommendations are not also meant to be whether it's something I have to do or I don't have to do, but the impetus behind doing it. And while there's a deep wisdom that in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, there's a lot of opportunity to take advantage of that are recommendations, not obligations. You're not obligated to fast on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, but you should. You're not obligated to fast in the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah. You don't fast the 10th day because it's the day of Eid. But on the 9th day and the days prior to, the recommendation is to fast if you can. But you're not obligated to the way you're obligated in Ramadan. In the Hanafi school, it's a wajib to do the udhiyah, but in the other schools, it's not. It's a recommendation. The number of people that will say, how many do I have to do? And is it something that I'm obligated to do? And I'll say, you want to think about it differently, shift the paradigm. The Hadith Qudsi, it teaches us that the purpose of the recommended acts, the nafila acts, the extra acts, is about love and the cultivation of love and the increase in love. Like if you've ever been for Umrah, you've ever gone to the cities of Mecca and Medina, may Allah enable us to visit his house in Makkah al-Mukarramah and give us the invitation to visit the illuminated city, Medina al-Munawwara, and end any injustice and oppression that comes out of the country that these blessed cities are housed in. There's not been a person that I've ever met who's gone to the city of Medina that has not said that this is the most tranquil, beautiful place I've ever been in. I've never met somebody, regardless of level of observance, if we have metrics to determine religiosity, who has said anything other than I have never felt peace in a space like this before. Millions of people are going to go for Hajj in the coming days. May Allah accept it from all of them. The obligation is to go to Mecca. The obligation is not to go to Medina. When the people make ziara to the Prophet Wasallam's grave, they extend the salam to the Nabi Wasallam. They visit Medina al-Munawwara. It's not out of burdensome obligation. And there's a link here in terms of just the love that's cultivated. Salman al-Farsi radiallahu an, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salman the Persian. He comes to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion and prevents, presents to him some wealth, some provision. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, what is this? And Salman al-Farsi, he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this is a charity, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that, take it, charity is forbidden upon me and my family, that the Messenger of God cannot take zakat, he does not take charity. 
So Salman al-Fasi radiallahu anhu, he takes away what he brought. The next day he comes again and presents something. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asks, what is this? And Salman al-Fasi radiallahu anhu, he says, Hadiya ya Rasulullah, it's a gift, O Messenger of God, a gift for you and your people. The Prophet takes it. Why is this important to understand? Think about how much you struggle sometimes with certain obligations. Waking up for Fajr, may Allah make it easy. The giving of zakat, do I really have to give it this much to this many people? The to-dos at times, rightfully or wrongfully, they are completed not because we worship a feeling, but because we worship a creator. And he said, do these things. And sometimes they're hard and sometimes we struggle with them. But intrinsic to our religion is the building of a love of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The completion of our faith is rooted in this notion that we love him more than we love our parents, our children, and all of mankind. And so if Allah made it obligatory to be giving charity to the Prophet, you'd be in a place where you wouldn't necessarily want to do it as much as you do want to do like visiting Medina, for example, because you're just doing it out of love. When you have to do it, it sometimes changes for some of us. But when you have the option of doing it, you now choose to do it simply because you want to do it. That's where the love inculcates itself. When Allah makes it forbidden for charity to be given to the messenger and his family, then you're only giving to him because you love him. Not because you're supposed to, but because you want to. You only pray the sunnahs, not because you have to, but because you want to. You engage in the acts, not because they're obligations, but because there's an intentionality rooted in real love, real mahabba. And just like Ramadan creates the opportunity for you to demonstrate how you fulfill the fara'id, the things you owe to Allah. Just like you have been given in the course of your life prayers that you have to pray five times a day. Just like you have an uh, obligation upon you to give in charity and to perform the hajj as soon as you have the means to. Not when it's convenient, when you have the means to. Allah also gave to us that much more that is just extra so it becomes a mechanism to cultivate now something that's beyond just do's and don'ts but to increase in love and in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah you now have the opportunity to demonstrate love but also increase in love by engaging in the acts that are meant to cultivate love why do you want to give the Udhiya? not because you are trying to fulfill just ritual practice you want to give the Udhiya because you want to have people who don't have food to eat have food to eat because you love them and if you don't love them the act of giving will inculcate within you love for those that you should love the idea that it's recommended now gives you an opportunity to be able to assess what do I really value what are the priorities in my life and when I grow up in a socialization that culture is what dictates and defines practice, the elders in my life are the ones who told me, do X, Y, and Z, but then there's not movement beyond it. It doesn't mean that the things are not there simply because I don't know that they're not there, but I have to think about why I don't know that they're not there, and now when I know that they're not there, why am I still not doing them? Why would you not want to feed somebody who's hungry? And when you do it out of love, fulfilling one share of a udhiya, a qurbani, is just the starting point. When there's love, you're going to want to make sure that everybody has food. <laughs> Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he understood the udhiya, the ritual sacrifice in the rights of the Prophet Ibrahim and his father, not as something that was just burdensome obligation, but he is also from the five companions who are known to be from the most elite fuqaha, the jurists, they understood sharia amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, 
when he would have his udhiya slaughtered, he would tell the butcher, proportion it into sections. And the first section he would say to the butcher to give would be to his Jewish neighbor. And the butcher is saying, you want me to give this to somebody who's not Muslim? And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he says to the butcher, yeah. And he says, this is what I've taken from my understanding of the Prophet wasallam. That you celebrate the holiday and you allow everybody to celebrate it with you. A portion for those who are in need, a portion for those who live in proximity to me, a portion for those who are part of my family. But when you can only think about religion in this term of externals and do's and don'ts, and do I have to do it? Is it something that's required to do? You're shooting yourself in the foot in terms of your relationship with Allah. The extra is what cultivates love, it what allows for the true sweetness of the acts to be felt. Not just praying like a rooster that the Prophet said to avoid praying like, where you're just pecking at the ground, going as fast as you can. Not just being in a place where it's your body that's in prayer, but your heart is not even present because your mind is distracted by everything else. You're able to bring focus and attentiveness to what it is that's in front of you. And you allow for love to be something that is not just understood in a romanticized, idealistic way, but as a necessary value that your iman is built upon in order for you to move forward and fulfill your purpose in this world. So when you stand in front of the divine, you say, not only did I get it done, but I got it done with the best of reasons that I possibly could. So a lot of these acts are recommended to do in these first nine days of Dhul-Hijjah and on the 10th day of Dhul-Hijjah, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do them. There are all the more reason as to why you should do them. And when you don't, you're choosing to leave out the exercises that allow for real mahabba to be built within us. To remove the other things that clutter our inside. The act in and of itself is the only way to yield what can be yielded at the conclusion of the act. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he is once with the Prophet salam, and a gift of milk comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira is hungry, he wants to drink the milk. And he's saying to himself that I hope the Prophet doesn't choose me to be the one to distribute the milk to all the companions because he knows if he's the one that has to distribute it, then he's going to drink last. And the Prophet chooses him to distribute the milk. Abu Huraira starts to pass it from companion to companion to companion. And now it's just him and the Messenger وسلم, And he gives to him the milk and the Prophet says, you drink first. And to his astonishment, not only does Abu Huraira drink a full mouth of milk, but he drinks multiple mouthfuls. And there's still enough left for the Prophet وسلم, to drink. There is barakah in gatherings when you are able to share. This is hadith. Food for one is enough for two. Food for two is enough for four. But the Prophet is also the best of teachers Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the only way that he can help his friend and companion to overcome the doubt that he has by engaging in the act of sharing with others is by having him share with others. Do you understand? So the only way you can gain from the acts of Dhul Hijjah is by engaging in the actions of Dhul Hijjah as well as the inactions that are necessarily a part of those 10 days. The day of Arafah is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, it's the day before Eid al-Adha. It's a day where if you have the capacity to fast, you should fast. And if you don't have the capacity to fast, it doesn't mean that the day is something that is without meaning for you. That's not how this deen works. Everybody is entitled to have access to Allah. Everybody has an entry point. If you can fast the day, you fast the day. And you understand that the barakah of it starts the same way we understand Ramadan. The first tarawih for those who follow the Sunni tradition of tarawih starts the night before the first day of fasting. Because the day in our tradition starts where the night precedes the day. So from the night 
of the ninth, which precedes the day of the ninth. You don't want to waste time. You can fast the day, but from the night before, you start engaging in everything else that the Prophet ﷺ tells us to engage in. The Prophet arrives in Arafah on his Hajj, that farewell Hajj that many of us know different parts and pieces of because of the last khutbah that he gives on the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. He still talks on the tenth day and eleventh day, but the ninth is a day where the sermon that many of us might be familiar with is something that we've read in various books of Sirah or heard people talk about. But that day of Arafah, they say that he reaches the boundary of Arafah. And he stands there at the boundary of Arafah. And then when the time of Dhuhr comes, the sun is at its hottest. And if you've been to Arafah, may Allah bless us to be from amongst those who stand on the plain of Arafah on the day of Arafah and accept all of our du'as from the day of Arafah. The Prophet waits at the boundary of Arafah. And when Dhuhr comes in, he goes into Arafah and he just stands. The ability for him to share a message with his people is something that is there. That khutbah is given. He reiterates to them messages that are important about understanding principles of race and gender and class. It's all there 14 centuries ago. You should read it as farewell advices. He's telling his people, treat your women kindly. Don't hurt others so that they won't hurt you. Don't be in a place where you're racist. A black has no superiority over a white, nor a white has superiority over a black, nor an Arab over someone who's not Arab, and vice versa. Same stuff that we wrestle with today. You're not special because of the color of your skin alone, more so than anybody else, nor the people that you were born to or the country that you're a part of. Allah in His infinite wisdom is the one that determined what lands we would trace our heritages to. And you should fear God if you can somehow validate and justify racist practices in the name of any culture. And after he shares remarks, he just stands and he makes du'a. That's what you want to do. You want to make du'a. And you want to be ready in these days to think about what are the du'as that I'm going to make on that day of Arafah? What are the things that I'm going to ask the Divine for? The verses in the Qur'an that speak about Hajj tell us about a people who they go for Hajj. They're on Hajj. And when they make du'a, Rabbana atina fid dunya. That's all that they do. And they're juxtaposed to another group of people who Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kin adhab nar They are all on Hajj in Ihram. They are making their du'as. The first group of people, Rabbana atina fid dunya. They don't even ask for hasana in the dunya. They're not saying give me good in the dunya. They're saying just give me dunya. And then the second group of people, give me good in the dunya, give me good in the akhirah, the hereafter. So good in this world, good in the next world, and protect me from the fire of Jahannam. Make dua like the second group of people. Can we have everybody come up close, please? If you can fill up where there's any carpet in front of you. Sisters also, if you can make room. One of our live stream rooms is not working today, so we want to fill as many people as we can. Inshallah. Zakhla khair. So what are the du'as you're going to make? And how are you anticipating those things? This is the day of Arafah, the most important day on our calendar. It doesn't matter if your parents don't observe it. It doesn't matter if your friends don't observe it. It doesn't matter if people have said to you, oh, it's only something that's recommended. What does it even mean? Don't lose the opportunity there are people who stood on Arafah last year that did not make it to this year's Arafah. You can read the du'a request that we send out every Friday. Just this Jum'ah alone, we sent out a request to four people in our community who passed away between last week and this week. May Allah grant them peace and entrance into Jannah without any judgment. What are you waiting for? What are you hoping to take from this dunya? That the creator of it is not the one who is going to give it to you before anyone else? 
They say that on the day of Arafah is where the covenant is made. Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? All of the souls that are created stand in front of the divine and he takes this oath with us. Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And the verse says, Qalu bala shahidna, that they said, each one of us, that yes, we bear witness to this. This is why it's called Arafah, because you're getting acquainted with Allah. There's Ma'arifah within that, an intimate knowing of your creator, the divine. Who is God to you? And what do you actually worship? Is it Allah or part of the creation of Allah? Your physical body, is that what you worship? The wealth that you have, is that what you worship? The validation of people, is that what you worship? The day of Arafah, everything is left behind. It's a day that you want to be acutely aware of your behavior. I've been blessed to go with some of you for both Umrah and Hajj. May Allah accept it from us. And whenever we take people for Umrah or Hajj, or if you've gone yourself for either of these pilgrimages, and you are with people, you know how much they walk on eggshells when they are in Ahram. I'm not sure if I touch this bar of soap. I don't know if the towel covered my head. I don't know if I just killed a mosquito. I don't know if I did this or I did that. That kind of awareness is what you want to have whether you're in Mecca or not. The day of Arafah is not a day where you write terrible things about people in text message to one person, online for a hundred peoples to use. The day of Arafah is not a day where you lie and you backbite and gossip. The day of Arafah is not where you mistreat your wife. It's not where you dishonor your mother. The day of Arafah is not a day where you yell at your children. The day of Arafah is not where you look down upon the person asking for something on the street. The day of Arafah is not a day where you fill your stomach while someone else goes hungry. The day of Arafah is not a day where you act the same as every other day in the calendar year. The day of Arafah is a special day. And you want to be the best version of yourself on the day of Arafah. You want to ensure that the day is written in your books, riddled with deeds that are pleasing to Allah. Give in charity on that day, volunteer on that day, sit and make du'a for yourself and your loved ones on that day. Engage in all things that only reek of goodness on that day. And it's coming upon you in just moments. We're going to know when the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah start by the end of the weekend. You then have from the start of Dhul Hijjah nine days till the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, that is the day of Arafah. You want to use them as a prep for that moment. Where and how all of you is connected to the rest of you, then recognize what you do from this day, but even importantly, if you forget this day, from the first day of Dhul Hijjah. Think about how different you are on the first day of Ramadan in comparison to the last nights of Ramadan. The physicality of things start to leave you. You detox from the caffeine that you're addicted to. Your sleep patterns that make no sense, you have oriented around worship. You're in a place now where the heart is getting full and nourished, not because the stomach is empty, but because the stomach is not the primary and sole focal point of your existence in the world. You're not making decisions primarily through your stomach and sexual organs. You're using your heart and your mind. It's the same idea from the first of Dhul Hijjah until the tenth of Dhul Hijjah. Recognize that you are a soul, not suffocated in a body, but the body is just the means and mechanism of a vessel to encapsulate the most precious and celestial parts of yourself. So are you going to use those days and use them in preparation for that ninth day, that day of Arafah? The people came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Arafah. 150,000 to hear his message. And he says to them, Ayubaladin Hada, that what city is this? Pointing in the city of Makkah al Mukarramah. 
And they know the answer, but they don't respond out of deference to the Prophet. And some of our teachers, they say, even they know it's Mecca, that if the Prophet said it was something else, they would just now call it whatever he called it. He says, is this not the city of Mecca? He says, ayu shahrin hadha, that what month is this? And they know that it's the month of Dhul-Hijjah, the month of Hajj, but again they're silent out of deference. Is it not the month of Dhul-Hijjah? Ayu yawmin hadha, that what day is this? And they know it's the day of Arafah, the ninth of Dhul-Hijjah. And the Prophet, after he is firmly established that they are in an auspicious day, in an auspicious month, in an auspicious place, he says to them, know this, the rights that you have over one another, the bonds that you share with each other, the honoring of wealth, the honoring of that kinship, it is more sacred than this day and this month in this place. Don't let it be lost on you that millions of people from all over the world come together in a most magnificent experience of Hajj transcending any type of differences that one can have. You want to embody that spirit and understand that in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, this is what Allah is instilling within us, a respect for ourselves, a respect for others, an engagement that transcends the self and understands that I am not the center of this world. Egocentricity gets thrown out of the way. Independence is not the epitome of self-actualization, but interdependence, how we're all connected and linked and in this together. So if you're not going to fast for yourself on the day of Arafah, then fast for the people that you love. So that your du'a is that much more wakeful. If you can't get yourself to pray five times a day in general, pray five times a day on the day of Arafah. If not for you, then for the people that you love. Give the Udhiyah, give the Qurbani, not in a way where you ask, am I responsible for this or not responsible yeah you are responsible for the empty stomachs of so many people in the world right now if it's not muslims who would be responsible for it who else would be but they're for you and i to take from not for anybody else so what you will put into it is what you will get out of it the 10 blessed days of the calendar year are just moments away from us Within them is the most auspicious day in the whole year, the day of Arafah. May Allah make us from amongst those who witness and benefit from it. Amen. Think about now what you're going to do to be ready for that moment. Don't let it catch you off guard. Be in a place where you meet it as fully present as possible. Inshallah ta'ala, Allah Azawajal will accept from you and from all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa nisa'ad al-Muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa ghafuru rahim. Inna alhamdulillah إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله so many other things we could say about the day of Arafah. It's the day that Allah Azawajal reveals the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenukum, that on this day I have completed for you this deen. A verse that the tribes of Jewish people in the times after the Prophet وسلم, would come to the senior companions of the Prophet and say, if we had a verse like this in our books, we would make the day that it was revealed upon a festival because of how much meaning there is to that verse. It's the third verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth chapter. Go and read it after Jummah. We could delve deep into the farewell sermon of the Prophet wasallam that he gives on the day of Arafah, a day where hearts are open and everybody is listening to what he would have to say, 150,000 individuals. 
We can talk about the rights of the Prophet Abraham and his family, Hajar, Ismail. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. So much meaning, so much insight, so much that can inform how we are. There's nothing that would stop you from delving deeper into it. You just got to want it. To move beyond understanding these things simply as rituals that are done for the sake of doing them, but doing them with a recognition that they are not meant to be an ends, but a means to something. Fulfill what it's meant to be a means to. And start in the coming week, when these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are upon you, to take from it all that you are able to, because it's for you to take from more than anyone else. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فأفو أنا يا مكلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين We begin this supplication in your name يا الله beseech you to send your choices salutations upon your most beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we ask that you shower your infinite mercy upon this gathering granting each and every one who is present here in and our loved ones only the best in this world and the best in the next we ask ya Allah that if all of us are meant to be together only at this time at this place whether we are young or old, male or female, regardless of our race, our ethnicity, our social class, our country of origin, our cultural heritage, whether we are Muslim or come from a different walk of life, Ya Rabbi, if our individual hearts are meant to be in the presence of all of their hearts that are gathered here, only at this time, at this place, then gather us all together again in the best of places in the world beyond this one. Increase us, Ya Allah, in all that is good. Make us from amongst those who take everything from the coming days of Dhul Hijjah that you have given to us as a blessing, as a gift for our benefit. For those of us who are able to fast in the days upon us, Ya Allah, give us the strength and sincerity to fast on those days. Help us to fast for the sake of our loved ones, to fast for your sake and your sake alone with the recognition that our brothers and sisters who would want to fast and don't have the ability to fast would do anything to be in our place, Ya Allah, for love for them. Make us from amongst those who fast on those days. Make us from amongst those who fill those blessed days with acts of goodness. Acts that bring benefit to ourselves and to your creation, not just in this world, but acts that will bring to us benefit in the world beyond this one. Mm -hmm. Keep us from having any ill actions towards anyone of your creation on those days, Ya Allah. Mm -hmm. Make us those who are kind to ourselves and to each other. Make us those who are forgiving of ourselves and to one another. Make us those who spread love to each other and have a healthy love for ourselves that we build deeply on those days. Help us, Ya Allah, to take full advantage of the day of Arafah. Give us the tawfiq to utter every dua that our heart yearns for. There are so many in this community, Ya Allah, who long for so much. Accept their prayers, Ya Rabb, and give them better than what it is that they are longing for. Those who are desiring companionship, Ya Allah, those who desire children, those who are in a place where their heart is filled with pain, those who have so many wounds inside and out, those who have not seen the faces of their loved ones for not even weeks and months, but years because of broken immigration systems, those who cannot provide basic medications to their family members because of broken healthcare systems. So many, Ya Rabb, Ya Kareem, the day of Arafah is a day that you have told us the dua is accepted. Grant us the tawfiq to be from amongst those whose du'as are accepted. And instill within us anything that we need to remove distractions from our way 
So we take full advantage and turn to you in dua on that day. And let for each one of us and our loved ones, those who see this place as their community, who are with us here, who have gone elsewhere, let that day of Eid be a blessed day for all of us, Ya Allah. Let it be a day of joy, a day of happiness, a day where nobody is alone. And help each one of us to reach out to all those that we love. And let not any one of us feel unloved on that day, Ya Allah. Make us those who celebrate it the way that you would intend for us to celebrate it. And enable us, Ya Rabbi, to be from amongst those who fulfill the rights of these days of Dhul Hijjah in the ways that you have intended us to do so. Grant ease to all those who will be going for Hajj in the coming days, Ya Allah. Grant them safety on their journey. Accept their Hajj from them. Return them back to their loved ones, their homes in a state better than which they had left. And make it a means, Ya Allah, for the healing that this world is so sorely in need of. Fill the world with barakah on these days, Ya Allah, and make us from amongst those who take full advantage of it. And let not any one of us meet these ten days of Dhul Hijjah without yearning to take from it all that we can. Protect us always from hearts that are not humble, tongues that are not wise, and eyes that have forgotten how to cry. Forgive us for our shortcomings and guide and bless us all. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samiul alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana, innaka anta tawabur rahim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalkihi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen. Wa akimu salat.